Hey everybody, I'm Jim Classic, and you are watching Geekin. And for today's video, I would like to talk about the Transformers War for Cybertron Studio Series Gamer Edition number three, Optimus Prime. This Optimus Prime was featured in 2010's Transformers War for Cybertron video game by High Moon Studios, not to be confused with 2019's Transformers War for Cybertron Siege line, which also featured a pre-Earth Optimus Prime. Can't really confuse these two. Let's talk about them. And before we get started with Optimus Prime, let us talk about the box. Now, obviously I've already opened him up from the package, because he's right there. Optimus Prime was packaged in robot mode, and as I've probably said before, it's a Bit of a chagrin to me. I prefer vehicle mode. But anyway, here we have your standard Studio Series box. We have an open window. And since I ordered this guy right off of Amazon, I don't think anyone had the opportunity to take the head off. But here we have Transformers War for Cybertron and a big old, you know, high moon render of, uh, of Optimus Prime in his robot mode. Studio Series Gamer Edition number three, Optimus Prime, Transformers, Generations logo, moving on to the side. We have a nice, fully, full, a more full, a more fuller render. I don't know. It's the same. It's the same picture, though. It's the same picture of Optimus Prime in robot mode, his pre-Earth mode. And here is another picture, Studio Series number three. Same picture, just kind of mirrored to the opposite side. Transformers War for Cybertron on the top, garbage on the bottom. On the back, we have product shots. Here we have. Big screen inspired scale, detail, and backdrop, even though uh, not big screen inspired. This is video game uh, inspired, but I guess um, someone at Hasbro must have missed that one. But anyway, product shot of Optimus Prime holding his weapon and, and battle axe and vehicle mode, backdrop, uh, matrix, and oh, okay, K on prison break. I guess that's the uh, backdrop. I guess that's the backdrop, the K on Prison Break. I don't, I don't know, or or, or is that when we first see Optimus? I forget. I don't remember. But anyway, uh, I do remember the K on Prison Break. I just don't remember the order of operations. It's been a long time since I played that game. Anyway, let us uh, get the box out of here. Let us get Optimus back here. Let us talk about the backdrop since that was mentioned. Here we have the backdrop, and let's get Optimus out of here again. Oh, don't fall on me. Right, it's gonna fall. And let me move the lamp. That might have to do. That might have to do. All right, anyway, here is the backdrop. Um, Transformer Studio Series. Studio Series number three. And it has a little uh, rocker switch icon there on the top. Gaming Series Transformers on the right. Generations logo. Again, it hasn't changed much in almost 10 years. And this is... The face. I don't remember this scene. It's been such a long time since I played this game. I do not remember this scene. Uh, I read somewhere that it might be Primus. It might be the part of the game where Optimus gets the Matrix. Spoilers, I know. But I, I don't know. I mean, it looks a little... I don't like it. It's kind of a creepy face. So I don't know if that's really Primus. But anyway, you put Optimus Prime right there. And look at that. Look at that. Looks like he's... Looks like he just popped right out of the video game. No, it doesn't. I have not decided if I'm keeping this or not. Let's let's move this in. Let's move this in a little bit. Is it gonna, it's not going to stand on its own. But, I mean, I guess it's a little dark. It's a little too dark for my liking, personally. But, I mean, I guess it's kind of cool. I guess it's kind of cool if you really want a background. But, anyway, enough, enough of this. Let's get to the star of the show, Optimus Prime. Starting with the robot mode here, we have a very robust looking pre-Earth Optimus Prime. The proportions are, well, very chunky. The, the design aesthetic for War for Cybertron game was very chunky. Every character was chunkified. Optimus Prime is no exception. So, a lot of Optimus Prime here is going to be unpainted plastic with some paint apps dabbled here and there. It's a very minimalist paint job. We got mostly red plastic, blue plastic, gray plastic, blue plastic, uh, black plastic. And then we got some silver highlights here around the rib cage, the chest, the leg vents, the mask, the mask. Uh, 
around the back towards the butt the butt bumper um so but very minimal oh right and we also have the uh you know the lights the pelvis lights you know uh these these were the, these were the glowing bits in the game you know the uh, autobot symbol is faintly painted on there but they also uh the autobot symbols the autobot and decepticon symbols both glowed in the video game too so i guess that I guess that light pink Autobot symbol is just supposed to represent the, I guess the, the glow. I don't, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, maybe it would have been cool to get some. I don't know how. I don't know how they could have done it, but maybe gets maybe make the Autobot badge clear plastic and put it on there. Get some light shining through there. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they could have worked that, but you know. Um, other than that, that's it for the paint job. It, it's a very minimalist paint job. It's just. Pink, pink highlights, silver, silver, this is silver, P pink and silver. Those are, those are the only paints. Those are the only paint applications on the figure are paint, uh, p paint, pink and silver. So now that I got that out of the way, let's just talk about the freaking robot mode. And as I said, Optimus Prime's robot mode is, uh, definitely robust, <laughs> robust and chunky. I believe I also mentioned that too. So even when it comes to, um, Sculpting detail. Sculpting is a little bit more detailed and a little more interesting than the paint itself. I mean, you got a bunch of these robot lines around the pelvis, especially look at the look at the lights. The lights in the pelvis, the lights by the rib, you know, they are they got that honeycomb, not honeycomb, but it's almost like a honeycombed, you know, design to it. Um, you got some, you know, just simple robot details, robot details everywhere. You know, like these weird, these weird legs that almost look like car seats, but they're not car seats. I've never really understood this leg. I guess they're supposed to be the, I guess they're supposed to be where the gas tanks would be in this earth mode, but they're kind of inverted. Uh, I don't know. They've always been a kind of a weird aesthetic choice to me, but they're there. They're, they, it was in the game. It's in here. We got the leg vents. Oops. Can you see? All right. We got the leg vents and they are very, very inside the shin here. Yeah, got some again simple details. Not a fan of this. This is this is the under kibble stuff that you don't really want people to see. If they, I don't, and I don't think this is how it looked like in the game. So I'm not a huge fan of this. I would have to dare say Hasbro might have skimped a little bit uh, towards the back. I mean, we have a back. Yeah, you know, it's car details, the wheels. Uh, let's see what else we got here. The wheels in the back, the robot mode, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the exposed stuff is here, you know, this is, this is the stuff that, you know, you won't be displaying Optimus Prime on the shelf like this, but, you know, if he's supposed to be in big screen inspired and all that, you know, they, they kind of skimp towards the legs a little bit, I have to say. Um, anyway, let's see. Well, let's get to articulation, shall we? So. We have a ball joint at the head. Can do that. Can look up. Actually, he can look up pretty well. He can look. He can look, he, he can look down moderately. Uh, definitely got some universal joints at the shoulders. Um, nah, no, no, no real butterfly joints. That's not. I won't. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, also, I have to comment. Got some hollow bits here. More hollow bits. Now for this, I guess I guess for the armpit area, I guess that makes sense. But when you have the arm out like that, you know. Um, we have a bicep rotation. We have a bend at the elbow. We have sorry, we have a wrist swivel. Unfortunately, due to the arm, the way the arm is molded, you know, the wrist can only go so many different directions. We have a waist swivel. Optimus Prime can just do a full-on waist swivel. Now, ah, he can do a high kick. He can do, ooh, that was tight. Ooh, that is tight. Okay. And he can't kick that far back, but he can kick out to the side. And he's got a cool, the joint here by the thigh, you know, it's like the thigh swivel is very high up. And, if, and we have more hollow bits here in the legs, which, again, not a huge fan of. This side joint's a little tight, but it's pinned in, so it's not going to go anywhere. 
we have a 90 degree to bend 90 90 degree bend at the knee and we do have a ankle pivot and can it go forward can't really go forward can go back a little ways but that's due to the transformation but anyway that's it for the posability oh yes and let's also talk about the head real quick we can jump around a little bit it's fine i didn't script this one out but let's talk about the head real quick are you gonna oh, oh are you gonna are you gonna you gonna zoom oh we're not zooming there we go oh, wow that's a good shot all right so yeah we have a nice little decent head sculpt here cast in blue plastic Got some nice detail going on. Let's focus. There we go. Got some decent detail on the mask. Very simple, clean, silver painting. I love the eyes. There's no light piping, unfortunately. Can it, wait, can we see it? There we go. No light piping, unfortunately. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. No light piping. But it's got some simple... It's got a simple... Uh, Simple but small head. Like, I mean, really, look at the size of this Optimus Prime and look at that. Oh, come on, focus. Look at the size of that Optimus Prime and look at that pin head he's got there. Absolutely, absolutely maddening. But it does look good. It looks good. I totally dig it. And let's just talk about Optimus Prime's accessories. For starters, we have, oh, let's put it back there. For starters, accessories, battle axe. We have his gun, and how does he use them? Well, very simple, actually. Well, for starters, let's take a look at the gun. Da -da. Put off the to the side. Put the axe there to the side. So, looking at the gun, um, it, it you know, I don't remember really about much what the gun looks like in the game. I'm assuming it looks like this. <laughs> but it's just basically, um, it's basically a dark gray uh, almost like charcoal black plastic. It's just unpainted. Um, there is no no five millimeter port, so that's a little disappointing. Uh, and it's got it's very hollow underneath, and I'm not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of when Hasbro skimps out. You know, this is Optimus Prime. Give this man a fleshed out gun other than like on the top this section you know the sculpting looks pretty good you know definitely see some reminiscent reminiscing details of optimus prime's famous ion blaster like the stock right there actually that's it that's the only thing that looks like optimus prime's gun is the stock <laughs> everything else you know just is a war for cybertron type of gun now as you notice there's no handle how does optimus prime hold his gun well he doesn't really hold his gun Remember, this is high off the horse of, like, you know, Michael Bay's Transformers and Revenge of the Fallen. This is, this might have been before Dark of the Moon, but, you know, that whole Bayformers thing of integrated weaponry. So this is what we do. And this is, I consider this both, both a blessing and a curse. You take Optimus Prime's right arm, it just comes right off. And then there's a 5mm port right there. There's a 5mm peg right there. And you just kind of put it there in place. Uh-oh, uh-oh, dog alert. Hello, dog. I see you. I see you. I'm recording. I'm recording, dog. Yes. Yes, you're ruining You're ruining the show. You're ruining the show. Yes, you can hang out. Just be good. All right. <laughs> so, yes, the gun integrates right there into Optimus Prime's arm. And it's uh, all right. I kind of like it. I kind of kind of like it kind of don't but i mean it, it's part of the war for cybertron game so i guess i have to you know i have to kind of accept that as an answer uh now it does have that little nub there and, I, and again this is another thing which i'm not fond of you know i might have i might have forgiven the hollowness of the gun if we had just gotten a proper five millimeter whoa a proper five millimeter port now, now I'm just knocking everything over. So this is what we have to do. We take the last effect and just kind of put it right there over top of that little nub. And it just barely holds in place. <laughs> it's not. I don't like that. 
I know, get, Hasbro, give us a proper 5mm port for these weapons. Or for the blast effects, please. All right, come on. What What is this? Guys, Hasbro, work with us, not against us. Anyway. So here we have the gun. We'll keep the gun on Optimus Prime for right now. It kind of looks good on him. You know, I wouldn't mind... I wouldn't mind if they had a hinged out five millimeter peg for the gun so that he could hold it in the proper, you know, in a proper handheld way. Um, it would have been cool. Like this little, little thing folds out and then he holds the gun. You know, something there would have been nice. Maybe some third party company is probably going to, you know, do something like this. Maybe fill this out a little bit and then give it up. I give a handle. I would like that a lot. But you know, for right now, I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm not hating on it. I'm just, I want options. That's what I'm talking about. I just want options. Anyway, so we've talked about the gun. Here we have Optimus Prime's battle axe, which was his melee weapon in War for Cybertron. Now, here's um, going back to <laughs> man. I do have a lot more gripes about this figure than I realized I did. So, how does Optimus Prime hold the weapon? If you notice, his hand. His hand is solid. His hand does not open up like Earthrise Optimus does. His hand is not automatically open like, you know, let's say Legacy Optimus Prime's hand is. We're going back, we're going back to the old closed fist. So how does Optimus Prime hold this axe? Well, it breaks apart into three sections. So we have the axe head and we have the handle in two separate parts. So what we're going to do, da -da -da -dun, we're gonna put this, whoop, we're gonna put this, kind of thread this delicately through Optimus Prime's hand. Oh, he's gonna fight me too. Ah. All right, well, I said delicately, but I had to use brute force. Put it right there. Put the ax right there. And then Optimus Prime is ready for combat. Axe in hand, gun on his arm, and, uh, you know, yeah, there's that. Now, another cool little thing about the axe is that it also, it opens up. It opens up, and it becomes a more of a battle axe weapon, where this is, this is more of an executioner's axe, I think. I mean, I don't know if that's what it's officially called, but I think that's, like, more of an executioner's axe. But here we have a, just a full-on, full-on good old battle axe. Now, the handle is just unplant, un, unplanted. It is unplanted. Unpainted. The axe is unpainted gray. Uh, and it's got, it's, it's, it's solid gray plastic up here too, but it's, it's colored with this, I guess, Energon yellow. It, there's kind of a gradient. And you see all the little details there, which is supposed to be like the Energon surging through it, which causes the axe to hold its shape and everything. It's kind of a cool detail. Uh, I mean, this is one of those situations where I think clear plastic was definitely more of a requirement, but, you know, it uh, doesn't happen. It did not happen here. But anyway, now there is one more thing we have to talk about for Optimus Prime's robot mode before we get to comparisons. And of course, what what is Optimus Prime? What is Optimus Prime? Without a matrix of leadership. That's right. You open up the chest panel, and right there, right there, we have a Autobot matrix of leadership. Now, going in here, got some got some cool internal guts, you know, sculpting going on. And uh, that's something we don't see very often for a lot of Transformers, or for a lot of Optimus Primes. We don't really see the guts anymore. Now we can take the matrix out, whoa, and we can just automatically drop it on the frickin' floor uh, where it's... I, I see it. I can go get it. But anyway, we take the matrix out, and, you know, we see the little 5 millimeter port for where the matrix will uh, will sit. And if you'll excuse me, I have to bend down and go get the damn thing. Okay, so, pulling Optimus aside, we have... Well, there we go. Pulling Optimus aside, we have the matrix... There it is. It is painted in nice gold with a little touch of sky blue. Really nothing on the back. And remember how I... Oh my god. Knock this off. 
All right, well, never mind. I don't want to focus. Fine. You know, dig your heels in. I'm trying out a new camera. I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to... Anyway, just a little five millimeter, five millimeter port. We're going to put it right back there. So here goes my last. This is probably going to be my, my second, second to last, my second to last complaint. My second to last complaint about this Optimus Prime. And it's the same complaint I just made five minutes ago about how the hands don't open and close. Rule number one, Hasbro. If you're going to give us an Optimus Prime with a removable matrix, please have the hands open and close so he can hold the damn thing. You see, what is what? Aside from me taking this out and dropping it on the floor and losing it for the next 20 years, what's the point of having a removable matrix if Optimus Prime isn't going to hold it in his hands? He can't. He can't hold this thing. I mean, he can... Let's see. Well, the, the hand is hollow. The hand is hollow. Let's... Well, actually, you know, actually, that makes sense. The hand is supposed to be kind of hollow. But anyway, or at least around the fingers. But anyway, no, he can't hold it like this. He, he can't he can't hold it like this. Not really. See? Just falls right out. He can't hold this thing in any way, shape, or form. So what's the point of a removable matrix if he can't hold it in his hand? At the very least, like... Um, let's 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 go back to 1998 to to Beast Wars Neo Big Convoy. He has a re he was the first first off he's the first Prime or Convoy to have a removable matrix. Let's let's note that in history books. But he could have the he could hold it in his hands because there were peg holes for the matrix. And you know just give this guy give this guy opening and closing hands or keep the matrix in his chest and just have it part of the sculpt and don't remove it one or the other. But I mean, it's just going to get lost one day. I mean, it could get lost one day, no matter what, but you know, the fact that he can't hold it in his hands, you know, that, that, that cuts away on some display value or something. Anyway, I think that's enough. I've talked about the robot mode. I've talked about the sculpting. I've talked about what little paint apps I've talked about the accessories and the matrix. I've bitched and moaned about the hands. Let's get to comparisons. Okay, so on to some comparisons. For starters, let's go with Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Class Jazz. Right there. And while we're at it, I believe this is also Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Class Sideswipe, which is you know, essentially the same toy, more or less a few part swaps right there. Ah, let's see. Well, here's going back a few years. Transformers Titanium's War Within Prowl. Since we're doing the pre-Cybertron days, might as well. Uh, let's see. Well, all right, we already have one jazz. Let's just let's just take this jazz out. Let us put Origins Jazz, since we are doing again pre-Earth theme. And last but not least, let's do Origins Bumblebee right there. So yeah, you know, we have. Um, oh, we'll put Jazz back in. What the hell? So as you can see, we have a few good pre-earth figures that we can uh, kind of mix and match a little bit i mean to various degrees of success i mean titanium's prowl is a little dated actually so is fall of cybertron jazz and such but they're a little dated too at least when it comes to construction but in terms of look you know jazz sideswipe and optimus they all fit in the same universe together you know these two we could probably make some exceptions and maybe prowl too why not but you know as we can see here it's a nice little set. Now, let's get these guys out of here. Let's get Bumblebee out of here, because I'm going to have to go through the whole process of transforming all these guys back into vehicle mode, and that's not going to be fun. But let's do another comparison, a, another pre-Earth Optimus Prime. Here we have the Siege version, War for Cybertron, and you can see that the Siege Optimus of Voyager class, mind you, is a solid head and tail, head and tails, Head and tails. He is a solid head and shoulders taller than the Voyager class uh, Gamer Edition Optimus Prime. Uh, that, that's a little bit of a worrying sign to me that Voyagers are starting to get smaller. Um, but let's see what happens. I mean, maybe due to his, maybe due to his robust proportions, you know, they had to make him a little bit shorter. But let's just see what happens. You know, I mean, it, it still looks good. He still looks good, and he's not that much shorter, but, like, you know, the head and shoulders height, 
and the tiny pin head with the regular size head, you know, it's, it's, it's I'm getting some warning signs here. Uh, but since we also have Optimus Prime, let's just, just in case, put, uh, here we go, Earthrise Optimus Prime, right there. It's kind of in the background. And again, head and shoulders taller, but we'll get Siege Optimus out of here. We're going to open up, we're going to open up Optimus's chest. We're going to open up Optimus's chest as well. And even just compare their matrixes a little bit. You know. Earth Rises is a little bit well, it's 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 wider. It's definitely wider. And this is also Optimus is made out of clear blue plastic where uh the gamer edition is a solid painted. And, but they're both pretty good matrixes, except this Optimus has opening and closing hands, which allows him to hold the thing. Oh my, you're all blurry. Which allows him to hold the thing. Again, this Optimus does not have opening and closing hands. He can't hold his matrix. Optimus could probably... Earthrise, Optimus could probably swipe it from him and hold it in his hand. Let's see. Yep, see, Optimus can hold hold the Matrix in his hand just fine without a problem. That's, you know, that's really my only, my main struggle with this guy. Anyway, enough of this. Let's get this guy back together. And I almost forgot one last comparison since we are on the uh, War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Let's also talk about the original Deluxe Class War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Now, uh, back in the back in the 2010 days when this toy was uh, this toy was in production, yeah, uh, they were they were all deluxe classes. Like these guys are all from that same toy line. So is Jazz here from that same toy line? But you know they never they never scaled in properly. You know, Jazz here scales better with the Gamer Edition than he does with his own toy line edition. Well, actually, this is Fall, this is War, but you know what I mean. Roughly the same toy line. But this Optimus Prime is, um, I don't know, he's still, he's still okay. He is still okay. Um, I mean, I would say the toy, at least in, in other areas, the toy in other areas is still more solid and has less hollow bits than this Optimus Prime. And I would almost dare say they feel about they're the same weight. They're almost the same weight. <laughs> but um, anyway... And we also have a different gun. Different gun. This gun also transforms into a smaller gun. It has that action flip-out gimmick thing. This one does not. Anyway, let's get Voyager Class Optimus into vehicle mode. Transforming Optimus Prime into vehicle mode is really pretty simple. Uh, I really... I didn't even have to look at the instructions. I just watched one YouTube video and I had it memorized. So basically all you're doing is just flipping the wheels around, opening up the shoulders, rotating the shoulders counterclockwise, flipping the hood, the backpack area, uh, lifting up the chest, which it can get stuck, mind you. Put the legs together, you fold up the feet, you open up the, uh, the leg panels, you flip open the wheels, you put the arms uh, underneath, the, uh, underneath the chassis or underneath the undercarriage of the car, you tab them together. And then you basically just, you know, close up the uh, close up the legs, like ro ro you know, hinge them down, close up the panels, close up the thing, and you, you pretty much got yourself a Cybertronian truck mode right there. It, you know, it's not complicated, and it's yeah, you know, it's pretty fun to do at the same time. And here we have War for Cybertron Optimus Prime in his Cybertronian vehicle mode, and. It's definitely an alien vehicle mode. I will give it that. Uh, I actually have to say, I do like this vehicle mode. Um, it's almost like... I don't know. I kind of want to say elegant in its simplicity. Like, it, it doesn't look like anything from Earth. Yet it's recognizable. We recognize this as Optimus Prime. It's got all the right colors. It's got the red, the blue, the silver. We know who we're looking at here. And it does bear some resemblance. Well, it bears more of a resemblance to a long-nosed truck than it does a cab-over-engine 
truck, which Optimus is traditionally, you know, traditionally is. But it's it's a very simple vehicle mode. The transformation is not too complicated, and you get a pretty cohesive, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, solid vehicle mode. Now, I actually have to say this thing looks a lot like, I mean, it does look like an alien vehicle, but for some reason, there's something about the front of this hood. There's something about this design, this sleek aerodynamic look, which almost reminds me of like a, like a 1950s roadster or something. Like I, I'm getting that vibe. And um, yeah, it's a decent vehicle mode. I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Not a lot of, uh, not a lot of new features are shown here. I mean, you do get the hood, which was mostly part of the backpack, and it's nice. It's got like the little grill, the big bumper. You know, don't even see anything that looks like headlights. No headlights. I mean, maybe this little, this little molded detail right there. Yeah, which it would have been nice if that were painted. Oh, I, wait, is it painted? Hold on. No, I don't think it is painted, but it is sculpted. But maybe those could be like the, the sensor bar, or maybe the headlights or something. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's got like the, the single smokestacks. It almost has like a, a 1950s Roadster. Yeah, that's what I said. It almost has a 1950s Roadster to it. Uh, one one issue, and I, I think everyone's talking about it, you have the exposed fists on the back. <laughs> Again, uh, that and that is like probably the only complaint I have for the vehicle mode. I love the way this thing looks. It, it is solid. Everything tabbed together well. You know, I don't feel like it's going to shake apart on me. My only issue is that the, the fists, you know, it rolls, as rolly things tend to do. And uh, that's that's it. That's all I got to say about this vehicle mode. I, I dig it, except for that. You know, I'm, I am don't want to go on too much on a soapbox here, but I just, I feel like this was Hasbro's B team working on this. And... Um, I don't really know how I feel about that. Either either this is part of the cost cutting thing that Hasbro's doing, or I, it's cost cutting. That's all I can think of. It's got to be cost cutting. You know, I think most other, I think if an A team was working on this, this would have been covered up. And I definitely am getting some B team vibes off of this figure. Now, don't get me wrong. I like this figure. I'm just acknowledging that this is not Hasbro's best work. Anyway, that's enough of me complaining. Let's get the gun, the, the very hollow gun, and there are two tabs right there, and there are two, uh, two, well, there are two slots right there, two tabs right here. Put them on top of each other, and then Optimus is, uh, Optimus is well-armed, and he's ready to drive into combat. And uh, once again, once again, oh no, where'd you go? Where'd you go? And then once again, we can put the uh, blast effect on there, and you can fire and drive. It's 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 a shame. And again, I don't know what stopping has where they could have put they could have made these five millimeter ports. Imagine we could have had like really cool exhaust coming out of here, you know. But they uh, has where decided not to do that. Now, as far as the shield or the shield, as far as the axe goes, um, I mean, there is a five millimeter port there. There's a five millimeter port there. I, I guess you can just do that. You know, just plug it in right there. I mean, it's it's there if you want to use it, I guess. Not me personally, but it's there if you want to use it. Anyway, I really have nothing much else to say about this vehicle mode. I like it. It's just simple. It's kind of elegant. It's futuristic. It's a little bit of everything that uh, you know, it's a little bit of everything. Let's get to some vehicle mode comparison, shall we? So, for the first vehicle mode comparison, we're going to start with Fall of Cybertron Jazz. We're going to have Fall of Cybertron Sideswipe. And I think those two look really good with each other. We're going to have Origins Bumblebee. Oh, we're going to put them. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit of a, a cloning thing. But we're going to have Origins Jazz right there. Maybe it's Jazz's twin brother. And we're also going to have the War Within Prowl. 
right there. So we have, aside from the two Jazzes, we have Optimus Prime has a nice little Autobot attack squad going on here. Now, I suppose I could grab my other Siege figures like Ironhide and, you know, maybe Ratchet and, you know, uh, the other Prowl and, you know, a few of the others. And, you know, I mean, th this Optimus Prime would fit just fine with the Siege uh, War for Cybertron figures, minus, you know, the uh, the copious amount of 5 millimeter ports. Um, you know, I, I think this would work just well, you know? And I dig it. I love this. I, I, I love Cybertronian modes. I love good Cybertronian modes. Because here we're going to switch to a Cybertronian mode I'm not 100% sold on. And that is the Siege Optimus Prime. I You know, I, I mean, I, I never bought into this. I never, ever bought into Siege Optimus Prime. I mean, I, I bought it, but I never bought into it. But, you know, looking at Siege Prime and War for Cybertron Prime... Um, where he was a good head and shoulders taller than him, this vehicle mode is as big and bulky compared to this guy. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's almost like real life mass shifting. How the short guy becomes the big vehicle and the tall guy becomes the smaller vehicle. It really, you know, kind of blew me away a bit there. But that's it for Siege. And yes, comparing him to the original War for Cybertron Deluxe class Optimus. Um, we see mostly the same thing. There's definitely some differences. You know, with the, the there's some gray on the canopy there where there's nothing there. A little bit of gray there, nothing there. Now, this is supposed to be the screen accurate one. Oh, and, oh it's coming undone a little bit. All right, let's hold it. That's, that's fine. It's fine. So there's definitely some some deco differences. I'm, oh, I'm taking it for the, I'm taking them for this for their word that this is the screen accurate one. It's been so long since I've played the game, I don't really remember. But this one's not that much different. It's just smaller. That's all it is. It is just smaller. But anyway, yes, War for Cybertron Studio Series Gamer Edition Number Three Optimus Prime. Do I like it? Yeah, yeah. I like it a lot. I think it's really, I think it's a, a good, properly scaled version of Optimus Prime for of that line, and it definitely works well with like at least Fall for Cybertron, Jazz, and Sideswipe. It works well with those guys. So I'm definitely in on this. I I want to get Bumblebee. I'm eventually going to get Barricade. If they make four, five, and six, I'm sure it's going to be Megatron is going to be one of them. Probably Starscream is going to be another one. I've got no doubt about that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, if there, if there is, if they're as decent as this Optimus, I will get others. Now, as I said, decent as decent, it can't be less decent. They, they, Hasbro can't be bringing their C team on. They can't be bringing their D team on at least B, B team or higher has got to be working on this. That's for me, for me to want to buy more, you know, it's a decent Optimus Prime. You know, I, I I don't like I don't like the exposed fists in the vehicle mode. I'm not a fan of the hollow legs. I'm not a fan of the hollow guns. I'm not a fan that he has closed fists and can't hold his own matrix. You know, I, I'm just not a fan of some of these things. This is this is budget cutbacks or whatever or you know something. You know, budget. The budget was restricted. The B team was brought on board. I don't really know. I don't work at Hasbro. I'm only guessing, but uh, it, it's 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 a it's definitely a passing grade for me. I like it. I want more of them. I just you know would prefer a little bit of better, a little bit of better quality. I want the same quality that came out of came out of this guy, this Optimus Prime. I'm not going to transform him. I just don't feel like it. But the same work that's put into this guy, I'd like to see in this guy. You know. I think uh, th th this is the second Studio Series figure I've reviewed recently. Well, uh, I haven't done much in four years, but you know what I mean. This is the second Studio Series figure I have recently um, reviewed, and you know, which the other one was Air Racer. This one is definitely, in my opinion, better than Air Racer. Um, but it could be better, and I'm, I'm hoping Hasbro can you know, up their game a little bit. You know, as a consumer, I don't think I'm asking for too much. But again, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I'm not trying to defend the cutbacks. 
I'm just, yeah, man, maybe just trying to understand it a little bit. Anyway, I, I think I'm done rambling about this guy. It's definitely worth it if you're into Cybertronian figures. It's definitely worth it if you're into Optimus Prime. If you're a fan of the old game, I would definitely get it. You know. Uh, and that's it. I think I am definitely done. I'm Jim Classic. You have been watching Geekin' It. And I will see you next time. Have a good one, everybody.